ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في القران الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال افلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون والذين هم عن اللغو معرضون والذين هم للزكاة فاعلون والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون والذين هم لأماناتهم وعهدهم راعون والذين هم على صلواتهم يحافظون أولئك هم الوارثون الذين يرثون الفردوس هم فيها خالدون اللهم اجعلنا من الوارثين امين يا رب العالمين فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد i recited verses 1 to 11 from chapter 23 surah mu'minun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in these set of verses six characteristics that are found in a group of people whom Allah calls al-mu'minun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that these mu'minun, these group of people shall be inheritors of not just paradise but of fiddos. They shall be inheritors of the highest level of paradise called Al-Firdaus. Now, these six characteristics, they serve for us as a checklist. They form a checklist for us to evaluate ourselves, to look into our own character, our own personality, and see whether we have these traits, these characteristics or not. And what's amazing is that we all believe that life is a test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put us in this world as an examination to see whom amongst us shall follow his commands. But what is amazing is that this test is an open book exam. How many exams have we written in our lives that our teachers or professors have given to us that are complete open book? You're allowed, for lack of a better term, to cheat. SubhanAllah, Allah has given us this book. That go and look into this book and try to get not just Jannah, but try to get al -Firdos. So let's study, let's discuss what are these characteristics. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts off this surah by saying, Qad aflah al -mu'minun. Now Allah begins by the word Qad. Now Qad in Arabic signifies an occurrence that has happened in the past. Something that will not happen in the future, but something that has already been decided. This is what Qad means. So Allah is telling me and you that what is coming up 
is something that Allah has already decreed, has already ordained, of a surety, have certainty that this thing has happened. What has happened then? Aflahal mu'minun. Now a shallow translation of this verse shall be that indeed, certainly, successful are al mu'minun. Successful are the believers. But Allah uses a special verb here for success. Aflaha. Allah uses this word which comes from the same root as the word fallah. Now fallah means a farmer. A farmer. And there are many words in the Arabic language that are used for the farmer. And why is this so? This is because farming was something that was seen as something very important in the Arabian culture. Because after all, the region depends on that. The sustenance of the region depends on the farm and on the hard work of the farmer. And that's why you see Allah uses the word that may surprise many of us, kafir, the word kafir for the farmer. Allah says in Surah Hadid, Surah number 57, verse 20, Allah says, كَمَثَلِ وَيْثٍ أَعْجَبَ الْكُفَّارِ That Allah mentions in this particular verse, He is giving an example of the life of this world. Allah is saying it is as if the rain that falls onto the ground, onto the earth, and then it pleases the farmer. أعجب الْكُفَّارِ Why? Because then it sprouts forth, the earth sprouts forth plants. But then you see this plant wither up and turn yellow and then dry up completely. This is the example of the life of this world. That's what Allah mentions in that other surah. But what I'm mentioning is this word kafir Allah uses for the farmer. Why? Because kafir linguistically means the one who covers something up. So the non-Muslim is the one who has seen the truth who knows that Allah is one, that his messenger وسلم, was sent as the last prophet to mankind, yet he rejects and covers it up. So linguistically, kafir means the one who covers something up. So the farmer does what? He takes the seed and covers it under the soil. So Allah is using, coming back to chapter 23, verse 1, Allah is saying that successful, Allah uses the same root for success as the one for the farmer. That successful are the believers. Now we have to think, how come Allah has made this relationship? And it's very profound. This is because the farmer, when he plants his seeds, he does that with full hard work. Every morning he goes out and waters the plants. He goes out and hopes that he will get the best plantation. And he's doing all of this without even thinking of immediate results. He knows that he'll get the result later when the harvesting season comes around. That is when he shall get this. So the mu'minun, the believers, are in the same manner working continuously upon their iman. They are working to correct themselves. Just like a farmer who can't slack off. He can't say, I'll take a week off, I'll take a month off, I'll, I won't go two, three days and water the plants. If he does that, what happens? It completely destroys his hard work. Similarly, the believer keeps on working on his iman. He keeps on working and then what happens at the end? He gets the fruit of his hard work. And that is why you see in many cultures, when the harvesting season comes around, there is festivity, there is joy. People are singing and dancing and doing all sorts of things. Why? Because most of us, we get our paychecks bi-weekly, monthly, or weekly perhaps. But for the farmer, he gets it once a year. Once a year, that's when he's getting his paycheck. So that time is a time of joy and happiness. So Allah is using this specific an analogy between the farmer and the hard work of the believer, the success to tell us that this iman that you're given is not an iman which you have it and you put it in your pocket and go to bed. No, rather this is an iman for which you continuously strive, you continuously work hard. And then Allah says, Aflahal mu'minun, that certainly successful are the mu'minun. And something interesting over here is Allah does not use the word Ya Allah doesn't say this. He says 
Now this is because Al-Mu'minun are on a higher level than the ones who are simply referred to as OU who believe. What's the, what's the evidence for this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he uses the word Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, which is found in many places in the Quran, Allah even reprimands them when he uses the word Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, O you who believe. Allah speaks in a very strict, in a very strict manner and reprimands them as well when he uses the word Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu. We see this in Surah Saf, Surah number 61, verse 2, where Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, lima taquluna ma la taf'alun. That, O oh, you who believe, why do you say that which you do not do? So Allah doesn't use the word amanu here. He says mu'minun. These are the ones who have reached that level of iman. These are the ones who have reached that matured state of iman. Then Allah begins in verse number two, the first characteristics. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ Number one characteristic, that they are those who in their prayer, they have khushur. Now, all of us have heard a lot of lectures on the, the concept of khushur. That it means to have complete focus in the salah. It means to be completely in that zone where you are communicating with your Lord. And this khushur, it also translates as a type of fear. A fear that also manifests itself not just mentally, but also physically. It manifests itself such that it even numbs the muscles of the body. This is the khushu Allah is talking about. And we've seen this when we're in prayer. SubhanAllah, the person right beside us is crying and crying in his salah, in his dua. And we're wondering what's going on because he understands that he is in that uh, communication with his Lord. So Allah says that these are people who number one have khushu in their salah. They're not just praying, they're not just those who go and establish the five daily prayers, but rather they are those who have this concentration, this upper level of fear of Allah that I have committed these sins, O oh Allah, yet I'm standing in front of you, I'm standing before you, O oh my creator, please forgive me. Then the second characteristic, Allah goes on and says, Allah says that these are those, meaning the mu'minun, the second characteristic that is coming up is that they are those who turn away from all that is lahu. Now, lahu means any activity or every activity that is useless, that does not benefit in this dunya or in the akhirah. So it's not just chatter. Or it's not just simply boring talk or senseless, mindless talk. It's even more than that. It's even an activity that is not helping you in any way, shape, or form, whether in this life or the hereafter. So the person, we see this in our times. People are completely addicted to social networking sites, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever. That I understand there are a lot of people who use it for good cause, but I'm talking about the ones who are addicted to it, such that even during the Jumu'ah khutbah, they can't help but take out their mobile device and start checking who said what, who commented on their wall or did what. So this is what constitutes as lahu, where the person is completely engrossed by this. And then when he goes to a lecture or listens to the Quran, barely four minutes or five minutes pass by and he's already sleepy and yawning. But then, when you're talking to your friend, chit-chatting, it's almost 2, 3 a.m. And you look at the time, you're like, oh, it's 3 a.m.? And that's it. Fajr is gone the next day. SubhanAllah. So this is the level that as believers, and I want to also underline the connection between these verses. Allah is not placing these verses haphazardly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the ones who have khushu in their salah, so they have this concentration in their prayer, they have this fear of Allah in their prayer, even outside the prayer they have this. They understand that this life is very limited. So they know that I can't afford to waste my time with the PS3 or the Nintendo Wii that I keep on playing mindlessly for hours and hours. My salah goes by, my, my uh, prayer and my Quran recitation and my fasting, everything is wasted because of this. So they keep away from this. Characteristic number three in verse four, Allah goes on to mention, 
وَالَّذِينَهُمْ لِلزَّكَاةِ فَاعِلُونَ That these are those who make a continual, sincere effort in zakah, in the concept of tazkiyah, which means that they are purifying themselves. Now, the translation of this would say that these people are those who are observant of their zakah. But it's way beyond this. It's not just your monetary zakah that's being talked about, but rather even our internal personality flaws. This is what Allah is referring to. That the mu'minun, you want to be from the mu'minun? Then look at the flaws in your personality. Ask yourself, what are the things that are lacking in me? And each one of us has these. And only Allah knows about them. It's only between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are people who have a problem with anger, they have a problem with greed, they have a problem with gossiping, they have a problem with envy, with jealousy. So this is something they know about themselves. So they make a conscious effort to get rid of this. They are purifying themselves. They are those who are continuously purifying themselves. They are trying to keep away from these personality flaws and they are working on it. The next characteristic that Allah alludes to, that talks about, is a characteristic that is, that is so important that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about it in the authentic hadith. He said, the things that I am afraid of the most for you, the Prophet ﷺ says, is the fitna of the opposite gender, is the fitna of chastity, of purity, is the problem, is the trial and tribulation of shamelessness. So important is keeping away from this evil flaw, keeping away from this evil characteristic that Allah dedicates three verses to this just one concept. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِفُرُوجِهِمْ حَافِظُونَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ فَمَنِ بَتَغَى وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْعَادُونَ Allah says that the Mu'minun, from their characteristics, is that they safeguard their private parts. They safeguard their purity and their chastity. Except from those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entitled them to fulfill this desire lawfully through marriage. Except from them, then on them, غَيْرُ مَلُومِينَ Upon them, there is no blame whatsoever. So Allah is telling us that indeed this is a problem that affects everyone, whether man or woman, whatever age group a person might get into, this is a problem. And especially in our times we see this, whether you go out from the billboards to the magazines, to the movies, to your handheld devices, to even emails, you're checking emails, advertisements and whatnot. So this is a conscious effort that the mu'minun does, knowing what Allah has says, that the one who transgresses, the one who goes beyond this boundary of marriage that Allah has set, then indeed they are the ones who are from the transgressors. So Allah is mentioning here the importance of chastity, the importance of being pure. And O Muslims, one of the most important things also, therefore, is the idea and the concept of keeping the house the best place of our lives. Keeping this relationship of marriage the most beautiful for ourselves. Because when there's so much temptation, chaos outside, then the house should be the sanctuary, should be the place where both the couple find peace, security, and happiness. That is why it's so important in our religion to overlook each other's mistakes, to overlook each other's faults, to inculcate patience and mercy within the household. Whether it's within with our own children, with our spouses, with our parents, the household, because it was brought about through this concept of marriage. So therefore, we should make a sincere and a concerted effort to make this place the best place of our lives. And then Allah continues and says, Characteristic number five. Allah says that the believers are those who 
fulfill their promises and their covenants. Now promises that Allah Azza wa is talking about, He is saying, He's saying that these are those who fulfill them in a manner that you look at them, that this person is watching his amana that he has been made responsible for. He is watching it. So when a person gives us something or we own something that is precious, what do we try to do? We make sure that it is in front of our eyes, don't we? We try to make sure that it's right in front of us. So Allah is saying the believers are those who take care, who fulfill and honor their covenants and their promises in such a manner as if they are looking at it, they are watching it, they're keeping a watchful eye on the, the trust that they've been, that they've been given. Now subhanAllah, what is amazing is the next verse that comes, characteristic number six. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَىٰ, صلوات عَلَىٰ صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ That the believers are those who when it comes to their prayer, that they safeguard their prayer. So what was just the preceding verse? The preceding verse mentioned and said that the believers are those who watch the promises and the covenants that they have. And this verse now talks about the promise that you and I have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The number one promise that we have after Tawheed, after Qimat al-Shahada was the second pillar, the pillar of Salah. That the believers are those who they keep a watchful eye over the covenants that they have and the next verse says that they safeguard. So if you're watching the things that you've been made responsible for, then of a surety you are safeguarding it. And an important point also that we can benefit from this sequence of verses is that the one who prays five times a day, the one who is safeguarding his salah, then it's not possible for him to have an evil reputation when it comes to trustworthiness. It is not possible. The person who prays his five daily prayers, how is it possible that he is not able to fulfill the covenants that he has with others? And here the covenants that our Lord Allah talks about is a covenant not with just Muslims, is a covenant with Muslims or non-Muslims, with human beings, whether regardless of race, ethnicity or religion or whatever, that they are those who fulfill their covenants. And don't we see this in our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? We all know that even his enemies called him an Ameen. His enemies, those who hated him, those who tried to murder him, yet what would they say? When it came to trustworthiness, they said no. Indeed, the Prophet Wasallam is al Amin. Now we need to ask ourselves, what is our reputation amongst our own friends? Forget enemies. What is our reputation within our own families? What Will somebody mention our name and say, oh, if you mention this person, indeed, I have no doubt. I, I can close my eyes and trust him with this. Do we have that reputation? If we do not, then indeed we need to reevaluate ourselves. That how is it that we're doing the salah, we're praying, yet when it comes to keeping covenants, we're not able to keep covenants. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who fulfill these six characteristics. I ask Allah to make us from those who really and truly and sincerely make an effort to inculcate these characters within our own lives. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Barakallahu lana wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Kareem. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakeem. Innahu ta'ala jawadu al-Kareem wa malikum barun wa ufruhim. your brothers and sisters and elders, we've been discussing the characteristics that Allah mentions about the Mu'minun in chapter 23 of the Quran. Allah mentions in the first 11 verses six characteristics 
that if any one of us has it, and inshallah, all of us should strive to have these characteristics, that when we have them, then we shall be inheritors of the highest levels of paradise. Allah says, of fiddos itself. So these characteristics, Allah starts off, characteristic number one, that these are believers who when it comes to their prayers, they are completely focused in their prayer. That when it comes to their prayer, they are completely in awe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their minds are not wandering around. Rather, they, are, they know that this is their communication with Allah. This is characteristic number one that Allah starts off with. Characteristic number two, Allah says that because they have fulfilled this requirement of being of having full concentration in their salah, then they cut out all kinds of activities that bring no benefit in this life or the hereafter. Any useless talk or any useless activity, they cut it out from their lives. Characteristic number three, they work on their flaws. Whatever flaws they have in themselves, whether personality, whether adab or akhlaq, they make a concerted and conscious and sincere effort to get rid of those evil flaws, whether it's that of greediness, whether it's that of jealousy, whether it's that of, that of anger, they keep away from it. Characteristic number four, that they keep away from all kinds of fahisha, all kinds of shamelessness, whether it's that of the eyes, whether it's that of the ear or the tongue, they, don't, they do not speak evil speech, they do not speak vulgar speech, they keep away from all these evil things. They, then characteristic number five that Allah mentions is that these believers are those who fulfill their covenants and fulfill their promises, whether it's within family or whether it's outside the family, whether it's Muslim or to a non-Muslim, they fulfill their covenants and their promises. And then characteristic number six, Allah says that they are those who fulfill the number one covenant that they have and that is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Tawheed and number two of prayer. That they are those who safeguard their prayer because they understand what the Prophet mentioned in an authentic hadith mentioned by Imam Ahmad and Sunan al-Tirmidhi where the Prophet says that indeed the covenant, the contract between us and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the contract that distinguishes the believers from the disbelievers is the prayer. Whoever abandons the prayer, then indeed he has committed kufr. Indeed, he has left the fold of Islam. In, an, in, an, in another hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, That between a man, between a person, and shirk and kufr is the abandonment of the prayer. So therefore, it's no surprise that within these six characteristics, Allah begins with the prayer and ends with the prayer. That this is how important the salah is. So those of us who are not maintaining the salah regularly, it's time to reevaluate ourselves. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in verse number 10, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْوَارِثُونَ That these people who have these characteristics shall be from the inheritors. Verse 11 says, أَلَّذِينَ يَرِثُونَ الْفِرْدَوْسَ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ They shall be from the inheritors of nothing less than firdaus of the dose of the highest level of paradise in which they shall stay forever and ever, eternally. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to understand these characteristics. I ask Allah to make us from those who emulate these characteristics in their lives and that we all enter Jannah with your dose. Al-A'la, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ibadullah, Ya Rahmatullah, Inna Allah Ta'ala, Ya Amurkum Bil Adli, Wal Ihsani, Wal Ifaid, Wal Qurba, Wa Yanha, Wal Fahshai, Wal Munkari, Wal Baghi, Ya Idhukum La'allakum Tadakkaroon. Udhku Allah, Adhikman Kathiran, Wa Sabbihu Bukratan Wa Asila, Wa Ladhikum Allah Ta'ala, A'la, Wa Ajal. Do what the more and more I can go to the